Welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, Courageously Expanding Love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Has the way that love has arisen in you seemed out of place or even taboo? My mission is to expand the conversation of love in the world. Is it possible to have deep, loving, healthy relationships? Have you ever been curious about having more than one relationship or partner at a time? Get ready to transform in love. Be courageous and set yourself free. In this show, we talk about relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. I shed light on things that are not always talked about with conversations about expanding love. The Elizabeth Cunningham Show starts now. Hey y'all, welcome to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show. It's me, Elizabeth Cunningham, and today I have an amazing guest. Um, Her name is Heather, and I'm going to get into talking a little bit more about Heather and um, what we're going to talk about here in a second, Um, but first I'm going to introduce kind of the topic the topic of today's show. Um, And we're gonna talk about a lot of things. I love Heather. She reached out to me via Instagram and um, was like, hey, let's have a show together. And I was like, all right, (laughs) let's do it. (laughs) <laughs> and um and I was just like man this is this is a woman after my own heart um she has she's a woman of many talents um, <laughs> um and she was just like oh yeah we could talk about all of these things and I was like oh I love you I love <laughs> you so much it's so amazing Thank um you. But yeah, you're welcome. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that, I, well, I will, I will uh, read your introduction here. Um, so Heather is a wedding photographer, a lover of love, an epic storyteller, and she prides herself in being able to connect with people while capturing their authentic moments. And besides being a photographer, um, she's also the marketing director for an adult live streaming company and a mama to amazing 18 year old daughter and is engaged to your nesting yeah. partner. That's so exciting. <laughs> Do the, the whole full gamut of life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so like we we're we we're emailing and I was like I was like hey what do you want to talk about and you're like boom 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 like all of these I was just like okay sweet pick Let's- one pick one pick them all I don't care spend five <laughs> seconds with each topic whatever <laughs> well one of the things that I was really interested in and what you were um and I mean like you shared so many interesting things um but one of the things that really popped out to me was the lack of uh representation in polyamory and like I think polyamory in general is really um under well it's underrepresented and also misrepresented a lot um and so like a lot of the representation of polyamory is like it's a triad where it's a guy and two girls um, and they're very attractive and good looking and they take long walks on the beach together. <laughs> Sign me up. I'm just right. <laughs> and uh, pick me, anybody? <laughs> just kidding. Right. I'm like, okay, well, you know, where do I is there a there's their waiting list or yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, and, yeah, go ahead. I was I would definitely say um visually misrepresented, right? Um, like you're saying, like they're most often we see the visuals that are out there, even the stories that we we hear are of famous people that, like you said, are like these gorgeous, amazing couples that get to travel around the world and they really just don't like, they don't day to day life with each other. They're just right. So we hear these Mm -hmm. stories, um, we see these visual representations, um, that don't always fit our story. Right. And so we're looking at these things. And I, I think that I come from probably that marketing mindset and that marketing brain that I put on where what types of visuals are we putting out there for people to see right so in in the poly lifestyle for me like I look around and I'm like well I don't really see a lot of people that are engaged to their nesting partner maybe they're married or like I don't know what they're doing but if I don't see me represented I'm, I'm over here like 
do I fit in here? Is this where I belong? Like, am I, and I think we're always searching for that, right? In life, we want to fit in with a group or maybe with people or something along those lines. And it's, at least that's kind of where I take is like, where, where do I fit in <laughs> to this whole yeah. world, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that I get feedback from, um, from other people in the polyamorous community where it's like, you know, am I do it, and it almost brings up this question of like, am I doing it right? right. You know, like, right. am I doing it okay? Like, am I, am I right? This, like, am I doing okay? I think What's that's it? kind of one of the, the, one of the biggest questions I get um, from people that are just curious about polyamory is, well, is this how you're supposed to do it? And I, and my instant answer, and I think Elizabeth, you're kind of the same realm as like, does this feel right for you? Is this what's, does it feel right? Like, have you talked to your other partners that are involved or, or have you talked to other people as well too, just to kind of bounce some ideas off of each other. But really, I think it boils down to like, is this your boundary? Okay. Then it should feel right. <laughs> like, are you being pushed into this? Okay. That's not right. That's not a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that is one of the things that, and I I definitely want to talk about like polyamory and like weddings and marriage, because it does kind of meld these two worlds of like, because for me, polyamory is absolutely about like, yeah, does it feel right to you? Yeah. You Mm -hmm. know, are you doing something that feels good, that feels aligned with you? Are you communicating that to the people around you? Are you checking in with them? Does it feel right to them? You know, like, what are you creating together? Like, that's kind of what polyamory comes down to for me. Absolutely. yeah and so then in like create having like polyamory and then having this idea of like wedding and marriage which is like very much like this is how it you know like there's so much of like this is how weddings look this is how marriages look you know and so it's like melding this like total creative world with like this traditional world and so I'm so curious you know how the how those worlds meld you know with you and like what you see I would say weddings in general, um, which is, this is a pretty interesting topic, but weddings in general, I think a lot more people are getting away from traditional sense, right? Well, it's still there, certainly. I think that there are so many things that people are doing now that aren't that traditional aspect of even what, I mean, I've been a wedding photographer for a really long time, like 17 years now. I don't know. I always say 15 years and counting because like when I start to push that 20 like line, I'm like, oh, I'm getting older. Um, I'm having some issues with that and I'm 42, but like, it just feels like it's like creeping on me. Um, totally. But even in the last 10 years, I've seen such a dramatic shift in even how um, I'll say the traditional monogamous re- um, couple relationship um, is even approaching their actual wedding day. Um, we've also mm-hmm. seen, obviously, now um, with the LGBTQ plus community um, and weddings going from in, in that sense where we didn't know, we didn't see that before on a visual aspect. Um, you know, photographers and vendors weren't sharing those images if they if they even were having or you know having those types of couples, um, you know, as part of their weddings, right? So so I think we're seeing a lot more in a shift um, just overall in the wedding industry. Um, but when it comes to like <laughs> polyamorous relationship I often now like especially since we're engaged now people are like oh wait a minute (laughs) wait how are you engaged but in a poly relationship and I'm like okay let's sit down baby (laughs) let's talk about that let's talk about that because um for me like does it feel right like does this feel like something that you want to do and and my, my commitment to, I, I call him my nesting partner, right? Or, or my fiance, um, th- our wedding is really just our commitment with each other. Um, mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we're not having a traditional wedding. We are eloping, if you want to put it in a sense of a term or of a word, but we're really going out to the middle of the mountains. And like, that's where we want to go celebrate. We love adventure. We love going camping. We love going mm-hmm. hiking. And so, our commitment ceremony to ourselves um, is just that, like having a moment to be able to say, like ex- exchange vows and, and say all the ishigushi lovey stuff that let's face it, he and I don't normally do. <laughs> so it's going to give us some time to like have those like ishigushi moments that I think for both of us, this is not our first marriage. Um, and, and certainly um, we want to do things a little bit different and 
being a poly couple, I mean, so we've turned a lot of things different. So there's that. Oh um, my gosh. But for me, it's like break the mold. Like, I think that's really just where I boil it down to is, is break the mold, break that traditional mold. Um, I, yes, I'm a wedding photographer. Yes. Do I, do I, people ask me like, well, do you believe, do you still believe in traditional marriage? Sure. Like if it fits for you, bravo. Like I, I also still think that monogamous relationships work for people. Like, does it work for you? The answer is a yes or a no. It's a simple question. And if you don't know, then you need to dive into that. Like if you're in a monogamous relationship and you're thinking to yourself, like, Hmm, this whole poly thing might be something that I'm looking into. Like, okay, then be real with yourself and say to yourself, okay, I need to, I need to deep dive into this thought process a little bit more um, and not just sink into what society tells you you're supposed to be doing with your life. Yeah, no, could not agree more. And we are going to dive even deeper into really what you can create and what that can actually look like um, in our next segment. So stick around and Heather and I will be right back. All right. Yes. Um, welcome back. We are here with Heather and we are talking about um, uh, the <laughs> how I wanted to say it in my mind was the marriage of polyamory and weddings. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> the blending of. The blending of. <laughs> and, and really like, you know, that you can build and create whatever that you want. But I think that people still have a, you know, a question, like there's a question in your mind of like, well, how, but how can I do that? Like, okay, yes, I can create whatever I want, but like, what does that even mean? Like, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that you were talking about before break is like, what do, um, like, how do you feel? You know, like, how are your, how are your feelings guiding, you know, what you're communicating and then what you're able to create? And uh, so for me, it seems like, you know, there's this breakdown of what is supposed to so that you can create something new, right? Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. I'm curious as, you know, well, I, it, you, you are engaged currently yeah. and you're also a wedding photographer. So like, how do you see that um, playing out not only in your own life, but maybe in the experience that you have in um, being around other people who are getting married and what they're creating? You know, in, in my bio, I love love, right? I am a sucker for the ushy gushy lovey stuff. I love capturing it. I love being a part of it. Um, and I think that that has kind of, not kind of, I think it's actually helped in, in my poly relationship because I do love meeting new people and having new experiences and enjoying, um, you know, getting to know somebody on, on, multiple levels so for us um, a lot of just on my side of the house um poly relationships for me are more about that connection and that communication right um and I think that differs obviously between like who you're meeting and like what you're putting out there and what you you want out of it um I know my first instant reaction anytime I tell people poly they're like oh is this about sex and I'm like it doesn't have to always be about sex people <laughs> like okay we are all sexual beings I'm a very sexual creature I work for an adult industry company um so yes I'm around it all day 24 hours a day seven days a week but it doesn't have to always be that way um and I think you know when it comes to marriages and weddings and things of that nature like you know maybe the partner that you are marrying that maybe that is the person that you are doing all the things with, right? Like this is the person that you are having sexual relationships with. This is the person that you're spending your life with. Um, sometimes we call them nesting partners. I mean, we've, we've all got names for however there's, we wish there's to call so them. Many names. There's, there's so, so many, many names. names. There's and anchor, you know, anchor partner. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, here's the thing, like what fits and feels right for that specific relationship? Mm -hmm. because what feels right for me and my nesting partner may not technically feel right for me and my travel um, partner or me and my you know communicator like there there's different areas just like there's different friendships right so like if you oh, and this is kind of the way that I break it down is like as as a female I have so many friends right like I I love my girlfriends to death right 
Um, and I have no problem having all of these different types of female relationships. But the moment I go to tell someone like, oh yeah, but I also <laughs> have relationships with men too. And they're like, oh, how could you do that? I'm like, well, how do you have all of your friends that you have? Like, no one's having a problem with that. Mm. Oh, because I'm not sleeping with all of them. Okay, well, I didn't tell you I was sleeping with all of mine either. But like, how <laughs> does it matter? <laughs> like, if ever, right. and for me, it's also about the transparency part of it too. Like, um, my partner and I are extremely transparent about our relationship as well as any other relationships that we plan on getting into or, or, you know, even if we're just messaging somebody back and forth, we're very open about, hey, we are in a poly relationship. I do have a nesting partner. There are other people that I talk to. There are other people that I share my time with, my energy with, my focus with. And I think the, the moment you can be transparent about that is when it's going to start working for you. Mm, right yeah that's that's the time where it actually works it's when you when you try to hide things or you try to oh I'll leave out the details of that or like I get everybody has like my partner doesn't want to know all the the details honestly like he's not about knowing about the details okay Mm -hmm. but does he want to know like hey where are you going who are you going out with are you going to be safe like we have some of our core values if you will in our relationship totally where where I have another partner that's like, give me all the details. I love the details. Like I'm in it for the details, right? So you right, to totally. See, like what works, um, you know, and it's relationships within relationships too. Yeah, so. no, I, oh my gosh. And I think some of it too, I, like one of the things that got brought up for me and what you were sharing is um, is the, the ability to say that you don't know sometimes, like when you're being transparent, I think sometimes we feel like we have to have it all figured out. All the answers. <laughs> right. We have to have all the answers. It's like, oh my gosh, well, now that I'm telling you that I'm in a polyamorous relationship, I have to have this like spreadsheet so that you know exactly where you fall. And like, that's not how it works, you know? Be, like- <laughs> be flexible um, and be willing to understand that those answers can change and give like my word for this year, I I pick a word every single year, but my, my word for this year is grace, Mm. right? So to give not only myself grace, um, but others that I come in contact with grace as well. Right. So that all, that, that is a multitude between like my business, my career, people that are my family, my friends, relationships, whatever, just giving that moment of grace, because Mm. I think so many times we get wrapped up in um, these are my boundaries and these are the rules and these are the things that I can do and cannot do, but then you have to give yourself some flexibility with that. Totally. Right. And so as, as your relationships grow, and if you're in a poly relationship or even in a monogamous relationship, you have to understand that like, as we experience things, this is a learning and growing experience. Life is right. Life is not a destination. <laughs> it is a journey. Yep. Life is a journey, not a destination. Life is a journey, not a destination. So <laughs> along your journey, you get to pick whatever path you want. And sometimes you say to yourself, crap, that's not the path I actually wanted. Like, let me reverse and I'm going to go a different way. You have to give yourself grace and saying to yourself, all right, well, that didn't work, but I'm a backup. I'm going to go, I'm going to go a different direction. Like you wouldn't get mad at yourself. If you missed an exit, you just take the next exit. Right? Yeah. You're not over there beating yourself up because you took the wrong exit. Sure. Like, oops, that just added five minutes, depending on where you live. Yeah. <laughs> to my, I'm like, to my uh, Seattle that adds like 20 minutes, but you know, Amen. Like, LA, same difference. Like me just added an hour, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, you're going to get to where you're going. Right. So, right. so on this journey and on mm-hmm. this like poly journey, or again, even if you're in a monogamous relationship or you're single um, and, and not doing any of like be be graceful give yourself some grace in knowing that like this is all just a journey that we're on and we're not expected to know the answers to absolutely everything and let me tell you something the moment you think you got the answer boo it's gonna change it's gonna change in like like a day in 30 days I'm telling you like we my partner and I sat down like when we started this journey we sat down and we're like okay I've read some books I've listened to some podcasts like these are the hell knows hard nose for us is what we call right. the hard nose over here right. and these are some boundaries that we want to set into place over here right and then I'm telling you right now some of our boundaries have already changed like some of our rules have already changed we've added some we've taken away some and at mm-hmm. the end of the day that's kind of like we've got three of them right like be open and honest if you've done something that you know doesn't feel open and honest 
as soon as you can be open and honest, let's sit down and have a real heart to heart conversation. Um, and we have a rule for us and, and I'll give an example here is um, if you are planning to have sexual relationships with somebody that we sit down and tell each other like, hey, this is the route we want it to go. And we're, we're, we're seeking that route. Um, and that's for both of our safeties, um, both mentally and physically, our health comes first for us. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Sometimes you get wrapped up in the moment. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you get wrapped up in moments where you're like, I didn't think that was going to happen on this date. Like, but I have to go back and tell my partner like, hey, babe, I told you like this was going that route and it, it fast forwarded a little bit and I didn't, I didn't expect it, but I went with the moment and we love living in the moment. That's who we are. And even as a couple and as individuals, we are very much in the moment, um, respectfully in the moment, if you shall. Yeah. Um, but I love that here. respectfully in the moment. I love that. <laughs> you respect yourself. You respect your own like personal yeses and nos. Right. Um, but, but being able to go back to him and say like, Hey, I just want to let you know that this happened. Um, yeah. there's, there has to be that that grace yeah right? and I so. think that that's so yeah and that I love that like that grace and the the, the fluidity of that mm -hmm. it, it is it's so important because you know that's where you get breakdowns is that when you are you do have like those hard you know and like of course there's some like you know non-negotiable like I call them totally. non -negotiables, yeah we have non-negotiables like yeah, Absolutely. like non-negotiables, it's like like being safe, you know, like wearing protection, you know, things like right. that. Like those are things right. where it's just like, okay, like don't turn off your location. Like we've got that too. Like I've got to like don't turn right. off your location. <laughs> like right, right. Well, yeah, and we're a female in a big city. Like totally, yeah. totally, exactly. And so there's some things around like safety and stuff like that where it's just like there are non-negotiables, but also right. like sometimes, yeah, you create an agreement and it'll change. And sometimes it changes in a moment. And being able to be willing to not only let yourself be human but what I'm hearing and what you're sharing is like that you and your partner let each other be human too absolutely absolutely because yeah. because mm -hmm. at the end of the day we we have a 10-year friendship on this right so we were in previous marriages before um and then got down to a point where we were like cool well I'm 40 <laughs> and I'm single and I don't want to be single anymore so can we do this <laughs> now or what like we've been waiting all this time can yeah. we like, in a relationship now? like is about is about time now is like. about time now um and so with that we've shared stories about dating with each other we've shared stories about being in relationships with each other we've we've had this friendship that we've built and I think that that's so important is that you do have the foundation of a friendship right like we have that foundation and I would never do anything to jeopardize our friendship let alone um our relationship now so sometimes I sit back and I have to like put the friend hat on and I think so many times in my monogamous relationships and I don't know if anybody else can relate to this one but in my monogamous relationships it was very hard to put the friend hat back on right mm -hmm. you I I would have moments of being very possessive I would have moments of jealousy I would have and a lot of that stemmed from the lies a lot of it would stem from being cheated on a lot of it would stem from I didn't have that security where I can look at my partner now and be like hey we good yeah we good. okay bye like and no drama right like I can like right. literally look at him and be like hey go have fun like go knock it out of the park today <laughs> I mean I've picked his outfits before he yeah. goes on a date like I put the friend hat on if you will that's what I call it I don't right. know what other people call it but I put that like super yeah. supportive I'm going to party pump you up all night long, right? Like I, I'm your yeah. sideline cheerleader. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, we're going to go on another break, but when we come okay. back, what I really want to talk about is, um, you know, we've gone into like, like how you can create and like the grace you can give yourself and, you know, but like breakdowns happen. And so <laughs> like, it's, not, it's not all like sh sunshine and rainbows and friend hats, you know, like right. yeah, no, the <laughs> so, <drag out> happens. <laughs> so let's, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about like what happens when breakdowns happen and like, how do you deal with that? So yeah. that's what we're talking about when we come back and we'll see y'all in a minute. All right, welcome back to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show. I'm here talking with Heather Keys. Um, Heather is a wedding photographer and she also is a marketer in the adult entertainment industry. And we've been talking about, um, you know, mixing the traditional um, things of like marriage and weddings with polyamory, which is very much not traditional and very much a, 
large creation. Um, and, you know, this segment, we're going to talk about, you know, what are the breakdowns that you see, you know, and you've been talking about like your own personal experience. Um, and, you know, what are the breakdowns maybe that you've personally experienced, but also like, what are some of the breakdowns that you see people dealing with and experiencing in trying to meld these two worlds together? We've definitely, in personal life, we've definitely had some breakdowns. Um, when you first start out in this journey, and I again, I refer back to calling it a journey because that's what it is for us. When you, when you first start is. out in this journey, there's like there's a lot of conversations that have to happen. There's a lot of walls that have to be really, um, I would say, broken down and rebuilt back up. Um, because we have so many notions that are put in our heads, um, especially growing up and depending on, of course, where you're growing up in this world um, and what types of families you were raised in. There's a lot of things that are deeply rooted, a lot of things deeply rooted. Um, and I'm not saying that you have to get rid of all of those thoughts and notions um, and, and you can't hold on to some of those. Mm -hmm. But a lot for me, I had to completely tear down. What was something that you had to tear down that was like really either really difficult for you or like really big? I think the biggest one personally is like, I was always told you got to get married. You have to have somebody take care of you. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you as a single mama <laughs> for a very long time, that is the farthest from the truth. Like <laughs> I, no boo, I got myself. Um, but for so long, I think that in the back of my mind, I was always told that in order to be happy, you have to be married. In order to be happy, you have to have a partner. In order to be happy, you have to have this white picket fence. Mm -hmm. So in the back of my head, I have been searching since the day I turned 18 for this partner that I was supposed to have. This guy who was going to sh like show up on a, on a horse, you know, a white horse and be this knight in shining armor. It's fucking bullshit. Like I showed up on my horse <laughs> and I wore my own armor and I figured it out myself. And, and I think, again, th that's my story. And, you know, you know, maybe there are people out there that, that can relate to that, but um, in poly life, you don't have to have just one person riding up on a white horse in the night in shining armor, right? Like, and, and I think something that I had to really understand is that for me personally, um, not just one person is going to fulfill those things that I'm looking for and that I'm searching for. Um, well, I, I've been married four times previous. Um, so a lot of people are like, you're going to get married again. Oh, look at you. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor, watch out, boo-boo. Um, like, I got your number. <laughs> I got you. I'm getting there. Um, but for me, I was always searching for like this perfect person who had to check up, check up all the boxes, right? They had to be somebody who could provide. They had to be somebody who could communicate with me. They had to be, you know, hit all my love languages. They had to be into physical touch. They had like, and I'm just like, that's a freaking lot. And I had a long laundry list of things you had to have and how, what you needed to be, what you need to bring to the table. And when I didn't find that, I would get frustrated. Right. And I would close in and I, oh, you know, there, there's no one out there for me. And I would play that game. Right. And in reality, like the more I am part of um, a poly relationship, I can see like, there are certain things that, um, you know, my nesting partner provides for me. Um, that other people that other people just don't or can't or I don't want them to. Um, but then there's certainly things that you know other people that I've found or have brought into our relationship who offer the things that maybe my nesting partner doesn't offer. Like he's not a huge communicator. Clearly, I talk a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I can handle myself in conversations. <laughs> right, right. And 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 he is um, and will say this himself, like he is definitely more of a sim more simple um, communicator. And where I want these long drawn out conversations, he's like, can we handle this in five minutes? Um, and I'm like, I think this is going to take an hour. And he's like, cool, I'll give you 15. Um, yeah. where Great. I, Compromise. <laughs> Compromise is a good thing. But when I found other, other individuals that I've talked to and I can have, you know, long drawn out conversations with them. Um, he's also super into, um, you know, being extremely adventurous. We go on vacations all of the time. We're hiking, we're camping, we're doing all the things, right? Maybe somebody else isn't into that. They're not an outdoorsman person. Um, 
my partner loves to go to the gym. So do I, those are something that we have in common. I've been with other people who hate working out. Right. So that's not something that, that we have in common. It's great to be able to find people and welcome people into your lives that can either enhance your life or come alongside with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's an area where like in, in a monogamous relationship, I never had that. I thought, um, well, I'll just give that up right? Like I'm a super adventurous, like live spur of the moment kind of person. Oh, but my partner's not. Okay. never mind. I guess we just won't do that. And I would settle for just, yeah. it's, it's fine. We'll, you know, okay, we'll plan everything out. We won't be spontaneous. Um, while I made it work, it certainly wasn't something that I was, ha- you know, super happy about. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that that is um, one of the uh, misconceptions about polyamory as well, is that, you know, oh, well, you're not satisfied in one of your relationships. Like, no, I'm I'm extremely satisfied. I just also have other needs. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And and it's okay. It's okay that like one person isn't providing me, you know, I'm not dependent on one person to provide me everything that I need because number one, like that's unrealistic to ask of any one person on the planet. That's a lot of expectations, right? That's a lot of expectations. And I, and I often hear, um, you know, from monogamous friends that, that are in relationships where they'll say things like, oh, well, you know, he doesn't spend enough time with me. And I said, okay, what well, did you tell him? Well, he doesn't spend enough time with you. Are you open about that need? Are you openly expressing <laughs> your expectations? Because oftentimes unmet expectations are because you have not verbalized them. Right. So exactly. Right. So these, these unmet expectations at the end of the day, have you even verbalized the expectation or is that person just not meeting it? Cause they're not a mind reader. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Well, and you know, we're talking about breakdowns and so like, what are the other breakdowns that you see, um, again, like in your own experience in like building this polyamorous relationship or what you see in kind of, you know, uh, in your lived experience, as far as like your profession goes as well? Um, really, it comes down to communication. I cannot stress that enough is, is in this relation, in a poly relationship and a monogamous relationship, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship you're in. Communication is absolutely 110% key. And just because you're saying it one time, doesn't mean that the person hearing it is actually absorbing what you mean or mm-hmm. how you need to say it. Getting feedback, getting fe- you're like, hey, I just said this thing. What did you hear me say? <laughs> right. Or how did you how did you take what I just said? Like where it where are you going in your brain with it? Because I might be saying one thing and I'm I'm over here on this side. And the person I'm talking to is like, whoa, like what the, heck, what the heck did you mean by that? And I'm like, oh wait, hold on. Like you're like, and being receptive to how they're taking it and not being offended. Receptive, not offended right? Because there's often times where I'll say something and my partner's like, what Heather? And I have to say like, oh, oh, wait a minute. I, I think that maybe I said that in a way that wasn't well received, right? right. Not saying, oh, you just don't understand me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, clearly, like clearly they don't understand you, but you don't need to like throw that in their face because maybe you didn't communicate that properly. Maybe yeah. whatever it is you're trying to say to this person, they're like, oh, I don't understand. Or maybe they've got some trauma around that response. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. Really understanding also, um, what your triggers are has been something that like in this poly journey for us, I've had to sit back and go, Ooh, I got some triggers. Okay. I have triggers. I know what they are. And now I need to express what those things are to my partner because he's triggering me, but he's not understanding that like some of the things that he's saying or potentially doing are causing me to get worried, causing me to get anxious, causing me to have anxiety. While that's my own responsibility to, to manage how I'm feeling, I also need to verbalize like, okay, babe, when, um, when I'm talking to you and you're playing on the phone, I don't feel like you're actually listening to me. Right it's a trigger for me. Or I could sit there and be upset and pissed off. That's not going to help anybody. Or I can sit there Mm -hmm. and, you know, pout Mm -hmm. and sit back with my arms crossed. That's not going to help anybody. Right. If I look at him and say, I'd like your full attention. I want to have a conversation Mm -hmm. with you is now the time to have a conversation. 
Yeah. And you have to so also good. check in with that person, right? Like, right. just like, I don't know about you, but have you ever gotten a text message from your girlfriend? It's like, oh my God, I have to talk to you right now. And then it's like, <laughs> like I'm at work and I don't have time to read your 15 paragraph text message. So right. It's like, now is not the time. Now is not the, and that's, and I love that you said that because, you know, there's, um, especially like in the, in the poly community, there's talks about like, being responsible for your emotions. And I think what gets missed is that, yes, you can be responsible for your own emotions and you don't have to put those on other people. Yeah. And you still need support. Like, and and if you're not asking for support, you're not getting, you're not getting support. Getting Again, you're not getting it. No, your partner's not a mind reader. They're not a mind reader. They're, they can't feel your emotions. They don't know what's going on with you internally. And so it's not that you're like putting your emotions on someone. You're not like, oh, you know, like you're making me, you know, feel this way or whatever. It's like, hey, mm-hmm. no, what I'm experiencing is this emotion. And what I need from you right now is, you know, is- is this like, or I need, can you, can you please put down your phone? Because it seems like you're not listening to me. And I'm saying something that I feel is really important. You know, will you, is that, and then consent, consent. Consent is 110% consent, right? So like, (laughs) if if I've got something of, 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 maybe importance topic for myself I have to realize one this topic is probably maybe not important to my partner um and two maybe they don't have the headspace to deal with my important topic at the moment that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to deal with it at all because there's often times where he he will tell me like now now that we've had these types of drag outs because let me tell you it got it took us a hot minute to get to this point just in a relationship period is for him to say like hey I know that you want to talk about this Mm -hmm. but let's talk about it later this evening when I have some free time and we can sit down and actually have a face-to-face conversation because the last thing you want to do is blow somebody up. Like we have, we used to have a really hard time with just blasting each other on text messages with stuff. And in fairness, you can't hear the tone of somebody. You don't understand like where they're coming from. You don't see facial expressions. So if you're going to have like a meaningful or deep conversation, you're setting boundaries. Maybe you're talking about a trigger or something along those lines, please do it in person. (laughs) You know where you're at on my screen for people, but like wherever you're at, like I'm pointing to you, like, yes, this 100%. Person and stop with the text messages. I, I know for myself, I have a hard time communicating some, some things that are, um, of a hard topic to discuss verbally. Sometimes I do get kind of wrapped up in my emotions. I will often write it all out and save it in my notes. And I will say to him, I took a moment today instead of blasting you with this text message. And I wrote out like kind of what I was feeling in that moment. Can I read this to you? Would you mind me reading this to you? And he'll be like, yeah, totally share it with me. Or he'll say, text it to me right now and I'm going to read it. Or you can read it out loud. Cause he also likes to be able to like read it and hear at the same time. Yeah. So, so maybe take a second to write out those emotions because Actually, oftentimes after I've written it all out, I'm being totally honest. I'm like, oh, okay, stop it. (laughs) I'll figure it out myself, right? (laughs) I'm figuring out what my things are because I've written it all out, but I haven't hit the send button, okay? Right. Because a lot of times you're just kind of like wrapped up in that moment and that emotion. Me writing it out on my notes app, I can take a step back and like 20 minutes later reread and I'm like, oh, wow, okay, I'm being a little dramatic right now. Okay. <laughs> so why no, are you it. dramatic? Oh, yeah. okay. That's because like X, Y, and Z has happened. Is that what's happening right now? Right. Or are you thinking about the things that maybe have happened in the past? Is that what's really happening right now? And if oh. I feel like it really is, then I'll come back and be like, hey, I need to have a conversation with you because I was thinking about this stuff and like, is this what's happening? Are we, is this the moment that we're in right now? And he can be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Or he can be like, yeah, no, babe, totally not. We're good. Yeah, no. Oh my gosh. So much, so much, so much gold in what you just said. Um, Give yourself grace. (laughs) Yeah. Give yourself grace um, for anybody who is listening to the re-recording um, of this, or not re-recording, what is it? Replay, there you go. Replay, the replay. Replay. (laughs) Replay of the show. I mean, like, rewind about 15 minutes, listen to that again. 
that was so much gold, so much knowledge. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to take another break. Um, but when we come back, we're going to talk about, you know, what do you really want people to take away from listening to this show? What are some actions that people can take? And also you have a juicy giveaway and <laughs> I'm so excited. So everyone, everyone hold on to your hats. We're going to be right back. All right, welcome back from the break. Um, we're here with me, Elizabeth Cunningham, and my fabulous, fabulous guest, Heather Keys. Um, again, for those of you who are um, listening to this on the replay, watching this on the replay, like listen to this show like a couple of different times because Heather has seriously been dropping some life. No, like you want to live a good life, just listen to all of the advice that Heather <laughs> has given on this show. <laughs> Write it all down. <laughs> Read it out loud to yourself every day. <laughs> like, I'm just like snaps. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Um, but in this last segment of our show, what I really want to um, talk about is, you know, what are you hoping that people listening or watching are getting out of what you're sharing? Yeah. I mean, I, we shared some of this during the break, but um, we all go through, you know, trials and tribulations in life. And I think for me, the only way to keep going is to know I've learned something from it, right? So every relationship I've ever been in, every job I've ever been in, um, you know, whether the things end good or bad, I think really has to do with, did you take a step back and say, okay, thank you for the time this is what I learned from it. And this is how I'm going to grow and move on from it. I have spent so many long, 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 long nights <laughs> pondering over like, why did that relationship work? Or why don't they like me or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, you got to step back and be like, okay, did I have fun? Did I learn something? Right. Was this a good experience? I think so many times that we try to hold on to somebody, something, again, whether it be a relationship, whether it be a job, whether it be a friendship, we're holding on so tightly. And instead we're not stepping back and going, okay, this was like a good time that I had. Like, sure. We, we may have had some bumps in the roads and maybe we're breaking up or the job is ending or what have you for whatever reason, but did I learn something from it? Can I grow from this experience? Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I often say to people, you know, relationships, the more you try to hold on to them, like sand in your hand, it's just going to keep falling out. Mm. the moment you relax your hand when you have sand in it is mm. when the sand stays put, oh, right gosh darn it so yeah, in your absolutely. in your relationships like your takeaway I hope that you're getting from this is like giving yourself grace giving your partners grace um and the people in your life maybe they don't understand um you know hey that you're you're wanting to embark on polyamory or maybe you're you've been here for years and people just don't understand it give them some grace mm. um and come from a place of love at the, at the end of the day. Um, the moment you can step back and just be like, okay, you know, I don't have to, to, to love you all day, every day, 24 days, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but I can give you kindness. I can give you grace. I can give you understanding. Right. So even if somebody is you know, ragging on you or being harsh about you being in a poly relationship, take a step back. Like maybe there's something going on in their life. Maybe they don't understand it for a reason. Maybe it's a lot of times it's fear-based is why they're not understanding. Yeah. Really being even, able to look at it from the bigger picture. Yeah, absolutely. And the same thing goes with like partners. Like if you're in a polyamorous relationship and something's happening in it, take that step back get in their shoes for a second, try to understand, like if somebody's going off the deep end about something, it's probably out of, based out of fear, right? Scarcity and fear is, yeah. is, is what's typically, typically going to happen. Right. You can take a step back, give them a little bit of grace, hear them out, mm -hmm. the understandings of all of it. Nine times out of 10, you'll come to a better, better place with it. And hopefully you're growing from that experience. No, absolutely beautiful. And I want to, I want to get to the, to the giveaway as well, because you're an amazing photographer. Thank and you. so uh, you want to share, share what the giveaway is? So I um, live in central 
California on the coast. It's a beautiful location. Um, I'm actually in San Luis Obispo, uh, California. And if there is anybody out there <laughs> that, that wants a photo shoot, you're in a polyamorous relationship. I love love. I want to celebrate that um, with, with anybody and everyone, to be fair. Um, reach out to me if you are traveling in the area um, and we will do a photo shoot together. And I'm actually offering this to whomever reaches out to me. Mention the show that you heard, you heard about it here on the show. Um, and I don't care if there's one of you, 10 of you, if I photograph a hundred polyamorous relationships <laughs> out of this. Um, I, I, again, love, love. And um, if you're in the area, let's, let's, you know, grab a drink together, stroll along the beach and uh, we'll yeah. take some beautiful photos of, of you and your, your family or your, your, your relationship. Brilliant. And we need, we need more, you know, poly representation, again, like to, from the very beginning of this episode, like poly representation, you know, is really, not it's, out there. It's not mm -hmm. out there. It really isn't like trying to do market, like being someone who's a polyamorous coach and who like, you know, has this show, like doing marketing, like it's so hard. So it's just like, yes, everyone call Heather. Um, <laughs> um, your, her information is going to be in the show notes. Um, call Heather, um, get those photographs and then I'll buy them from you. And then <laughs> I will, you know, <laughs> there you go. There you go. As long as and everyone's just, consenting, as long as everyone's yeah, consenting, absolutely. you want to be a part of my marketing, um, uh, you know, and, uh, but yeah, no call Heather. And that's such a generous offer. It's like, thank you so much um, for, uh, having that be available for people. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and to, to work with, um, someone who's, who's like you and understands the different dynamics that come with being in a poly family. I mean, I've got a daughter myself. And so I under, I understand some of those yeah. interesting dynamics that kind of play out too. So if you've got kids or, or anything like that, and you want to bring them along, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to hey, work with them as well. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. So share with people how they can find you and then we're going to sign off. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram. I make it really easy. It's just Heather J keys, um, K E Y S, uh, as well as my website is the same. So Heather J keys.com is where you can find me. Mm, beautiful. Oh my gosh, Heather. <laughs> thank you so much for Absolutely. being on the show today. It has been an absolute pleasure to have you. And obviously we could have talked for hours and hours and hours, but you know, I think that you got <laughs> next time, <laughs> There's next time, next time. Exactly. So, but we got some real gold in there. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for bringing all of your life and your experience and your love to the show. I just appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm open for questions. So if anyone wants to reach out to me or you have, you have additional questions um, and I'd love to be on the show again too. So <laughs> we get a ton of people asking a ton of questions. Maybe we'll come back and come back together and answer. Sure, yeah, we'll do a Q and A session. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm all awesome. for this. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much everyone for listening and we will see you next week, same time, Tuesday at 3 p.m. And you can watch the replay of this episode on the Transformation Network on YouTube. And you can also catch it on podcasts on pretty much all podcast platforms that are available. Um, just search the Elizabeth Cunningham show and you'll find it. You have been listening to the Elizabeth Cunningham Show, courageously expanding love with me, Elizabeth Cunningham. Tune in live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we shed light on relationships, sex, love, and the ways we wish we could be, but never thought were possible. Learn to love yourself and create the relationships you want. Connect with me at elizabethannecunningham.com. That's elizabethannecunningham.com.